talking about the Nintendo Switch 2 is a little taboo right now, right? We know the Nintendo Switch 2 is being revealed at some point coming up here in, I don't know, what is it, uh, 2024, 2025, right? Nintendo said there would be some sort of announcement. We don't need to go over all that. You guys know that news by now. But it, it's become a little taboo because really we all just want this damn thing to be revealed, right? And there is some belief that there could be information coming out of Gamescom this year. Remember last year we had information come out. I, I, I think that might be a little, I don't know, a, a little wishful thinking. After all, Nintendo's not at Gamescom this year. Last year, Nintendo was at Gamescom in the business section showing off factually demos of Mario Wonder. We know that because previews were made from those demos. And supposedly demos of Nintendo Switch 2's technology uh, with a, a Matrix demo and a Breath of the Wild in 4K demo. This is what was reported anyways back then. Nintendo's not at Gamescom this year, not even in the business section. So uh, I don't really think we're going to get too much out of here. You might hear some industry chatter, you know, when third parties uh, get together and start talking with media. Sometimes you get a little chatter, but, you know, that's going to be coming from third-party devs, not directly Nintendo. But we do have a couple things to talk about today. Uh, one of them is that, you know, possible concerns for the power of the Nintendo Switch 2, especially in comparison to the Xbox Series S due to well, how some developers feel about that platform. Although I want to debunk some of the conversation with it. I think the conversation is a little misleading and might be teetering on yeah, console warring to try to attack Nintendo before the system is even unveiled, let alone comes out. And then the other piece of information we have to talk about is that there is a game developer actually talking about Nintendo Switch 2 publicly, and that is the CEO of Amazon Games, who recently did an interview with IGN, and in that interview talked openly about the Nintendo Switch 2, which I, I find to be a little fascinating because I think the way they talked was very telling about something... It, it, it's just just hold on to your butt cheeks here uh i would love it if you guys would go ahead and smash that like button down below hey you know if one of these days one of these videos we can get to a thousand likes in 24 hours you're gonna unlock something pretty cool at the channel at least cool if i say so myself maybe i'm Maybe I'm hyping up a bunch of nothing. I guess you'll have to wait and find out. Also, we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. So if you want to stay up to date on everything Switch 2, Echoes of Wisdom, Jamboree, uh, or whatever's going on at Nintendo in the future, uh, tune in right here. Now, what I want to focus on first is this tweet by Del Walker. Now, Del Walker is a developer or a former developer, an artist, developer, etc., at Naughty Dog, Rocksteady Games, and Respawn. He's worked on a number of games, and I don't really want to go over them all uh, because I feel like that's being a little disingenuous. There was actually a uh, website that clickbaited what he said here uh, to relate it to a game that he was never directly involved with that game, making it work on Xbox Series S. So it really just it pushed things a little bit too far. It's okay to give the history of the developer, but we don't know the history of their working with the Xbox Series S. And that's going to matter because of this tweet that Del Walker put out where he said, I wish the Series S never existed. He was responding to someone who felt bad about Xbox. Uh, and he said, so annoying to optimize for that console. And again, no context given on what game he optimized for Series S. Uh, I expect we'll unfortunately see more game launches get skipped by Xbox in the future. Now, getting skipped, I think, has more to do with sales than it has to do with the Xbox Series S, in my opinion. But uh, we also have had something happen recently where Avowed, which is a Microsoft game, it was announced as running at 30 FPS on Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X. And most of this is probably coming down to well, the Series S is less powerful than the Xbox Series X, and as such, they wanted to have close to feature parity between the two, and that included the frame rate, so they probably couldn't get it to run at a better than stable 30 FPS on Xbox Series S, and so they're limiting the Xbox Series X version also to 30 FPS. It's a, it's a bit of a bummer, especially for a game developed internally at Microsoft, but what are you going to do? That's just what's happening, and that's what happened with the decisions that went into that game. Now, this has led to some concerns over Nintendo Switch 2, right? Nintendo Switch 2 is most often compared to, okay, in handheld, you're going to get like a PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 4 Pro type of performance. In docked mode, you could be seeing things that perform as well as 
say an Xbox Series S, except you have the benefits of DLSS. And that sounds really good. Uh, but then you start thinking about how, like, hey, this developer said it's hard to optimize for Series S. And then you have all the additional context out there of, man, anything that comes to Series S just looks like it's nerfed or being held back. And honestly, if you think about it on a grander scale, there's a general opinion among gamers that even like video games being made for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, a lot of them end up having Xbox One and or PlayStation 4 versions of those games. And so people, they're like, ah, maybe it's even being held back by the PlayStation 4 and Xbox, you know, Series, or Xbox One, sorry. Uh, look, Xbox has some funky names out there. Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series X. Uh, you know, I get confused at times. Uh, that's how you know it's not good branding if it's that easy to confuse it. But I just want to point out uh, a couple of things here with those concerns that, like, you know, if they make it for for Nintendo Switch 2, uh, games will be held back or it's going to be difficult to optimize for. The one key difference is when AAA companies bring their games over to Xbox Series X, they have to. It's mandated by Microsoft. They have to make the, the game run with feature parity on the Xbox Series S. They have to to do that. They might not want to do that. When they make the game for PlayStation 5 and PC, they only have to worry about the PlayStation 5 and PC. Whereas when you go to Xbox, you have to consider and take into you know, account the Series S, which you maybe never originally developed your game around. And so that can make optimization very difficult. And you probably don't even have like a dedicated team specifically for Xbox Series S. You might have an Xbox team, but they're working on basically two different versions of the game. Kind of wild. Now, you might go, well, isn't that a problem with Switch? It's got a handheld mode. It's got a docked mode, yada, yada. Yes, except that every Switch is that way. So if you're going to make a game for Nintendo Switch 2, that is a deliberate choice. You have chosen to deal with whatever the specs are. A lot of people that want to bring their games over, like when Baldur's Gate 3 wanted to come to Xbox originally, they didn't want to do an Xbox Series S version. They knew they were going to have to cut features for it, and Microsoft wasn't okay with that. Now, they made an exception for that game, but that's besides the point. Nobody wants to have to make that choice. The choice should just be, do we want to come to your platform or not? And if a third-party company chooses to bring their AAA game over to Nintendo Switch 2, they have made that choice, and thus this complaint doesn't exist because you already know what you're getting into. On top of that, there's usually entire teams internally and even externally that handle ports. Their entire purpose of existence is specialized in making games for Nintendo's hardware. Heck, Nintendo just bought recently an entire Western studio whose only job is to port third-party games to Switch. So Nintendo now even has a studio they can offer to third parties to help port games over to Nintendo Switch 2 in particular. So I, I think that this is maybe a little bit overblown on how much these opinions from developers and, and all that on Xbox Series S actually matter for Nintendo Switch 2. Because yeah, you're going to have to optimize for Switch 2, but guess what? You're going to have a whole team where that's their only job is to do that. And look, everything we've heard is that third parties are really excited for Nintendo Switch 2. And on top of that, most people think Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be massively more popular than Xbox Series X and S. And so unlike Xbox, where it can kind of feel a little pointless at times because the audience isn't so large, people want to be on Switch 2 because they assume the audience is going to be at least half as big as it was on Nintendo Switch, if not another 100 million strong, and they're going to want their games to be there because they want to be where the gamers are. Now, this doesn't mean that you know, developers shouldn't prioritize other things. Uh, there was a recent developer, and I won't put them on blast right now, but there was a recent developer who came out and, and, and said, hey, yeah, we're at 30 FPS because we really wanted to push the lighting system and the VFX. And most people's reactions, and again, this is about avowed, uh, but I won't, I won't say who said this, uh, most gamers' reactions is uh, 60 FPS is significantly more important than a little bit better VFX and a little bit better lighting because 60 FPS actually affects the gameplay. Uh, it kind of was one of those saying the quiet part out loud moments uh, where uh, we all know that visual fidelity is being chosen over superior gameplay. And because of that, we're actually suffering with some of the modern AAA games where they just gameplay is kind of secondary to how a game looks because it's easier to sell a game based on how it looks in a trailer versus how it feels to play. 
and avowed the first person game. It should be 60 FPS, period. All first person games, it almost should be, I wish it was like a law that it should be 60 FPS minimum because first person games need higher frame rates because it massively affects gameplay. If you're at 30 FPS and you even have like a three frame drop, it could be really jarring and throw you out of the game just from like an immersion standpoint. And I know we dealt with some of the stuff in the early days of, you know, first person 3D games, but that was the early days. We're not in the 90s and, two, and early 2000s anymore. There's no reason to not have 60 FPS other than, hey, we're just openly admitting that we are pushing visuals over gameplay. That that sucks, <laughs> okay? Uh, on PC, it probably won't be a problem, right? PC, you can always overpower or mess with settings and still get your 60 FPS, something that you can only do in sparing amounts on console. Now, moving on to our next story, this is one that I find to be fascinating for several reasons, uh, because this is a developer, or I, is he a developer? I guess he's just the CEO of Amazon Games. I, I wouldn't call him a game developer, but he, he talked about how they want to bring games to Nintendo Switch 2 in an interview. So this this comes from uh, Amazon Game CEO Christoph Hartman. Uh, and here's what he had to say about Nintendo Switch 2. Yeah, we obviously plan to develop games for it, and I can't wait for it to be out. I mean, honestly, I'd rather have them wait a year and get it perfect than rush it to the market and then we all complain about what doesn't work. Switch has been such a fantastic product. I can wait another year if I have to. And from development, I think most non-Nintendo developers are not exclusively doing titles for Switch. They're always part of the portfolio of a mix of platforms. Just wait. Now, Hartman's statement, and this is uh, from IGN, is especially notable given that Amazon Games has not yet released a game, a not even one, on Nintendo's platforms. To this point, games like New World and Lost Ark have mainly been PC releases, while Amazon Games will be releasing Throne and Liberty on console this fall, and it'll be supporting PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X slash S, and PC. Uh, it's also notable they own the Tomb Raider franchise right now, uh, and that's like the one franchise that we're like, hey, we've had Tomb Raider you know, in some forms on Nintendo in the past. Uh, it'd be cool if we can get future Tomb Raider games. Now, I, I want to say something here, and I'm not going to get into the rest of the interview because the, the Amazon Games CEO guy doesn't seem to understand video games, uh, which is fine. Uh, look, I don't know that this guy ever worked in video games before he was hired to run this. He might have been an internal Amazon employee. But what I will say is this wording makes it sound like Amazon Games doesn't have a dev kit. And I say this because, have you seen 2K Games come out and talk like this? 2K Games CEO? How about Capcom's CEO? Or Square Enix's CEO? How about any company that actually has put games on Nintendo platforms? Have any of them come forward with this sort of information? Being like, yeah, of course we're going to support the platform with blah, 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 blah. Uh, no. Because they have dev kits. And when you have dev kits, you are under a very, very strict NDA. Most of the times that NDA means you essentially can't even acknowledge the new platform. The most we have seen is like the word Nintendo platforms put into like a financial briefing for like future projections. on like, hey, we're going to release games on PlayStation, Xbox, and, and Nintendo platforms. And even then, it's kind of like it's so vague, you know, it, it, it could mean anything. Uh, so I, I find it fascinating that the Amazon Game CEO is like, yeah, man, we plan to support that thing. Just take your time, Nintendo. It doesn't matter when we release. We'd rather you get the product right, which is like, actually, we don't have dev kits yet, so take your time so we can get a dev kit, so maybe we can release a product. And it's like, well, you probably didn't get a dev kit because based on the games you put out and the games you've canceled, your games aren't exactly the most hype games in the world. And I know Amazon is trying to flex and, and, and throw some money in the gaming sphere. And you know what? I'm honestly fine with that. And I'm not hating on their games, but I am saying that, you know, they're not, they haven't exactly made the games that are of high interest to people who buy Nintendo platforms. Uh, I do want to see their games come over, though, because I want all games. I just, it, it's very obvious to me they don't have a dev kit. And I could be wrong. Maybe they do have a dev kit, and this guy just doesn't care. And he's just like, I don't care that it says I can't talk about the system. I was asked about it. I'm going to give a direct response. You know, most responses, when we, you even see in these financial briefings, investors will, like, ask directly, hey, do you plan to support Nintendo's next platform? And they'll just give some vague answer, a vague answer like, oh, uh, you know, we're not at liberty to talk about other companies' uh, products. 
you know, but, uh, you know, we've always had success with Nintendo and I don't, I don't foresee us, you know, not working with them in the future. And that's pretty much all you get. <laughs> you don't really get anything else. But Amazon has no history with Nintendo. They've never put a game out on Nintendo. Uh, well, they haven't put that many games out in general, but they haven't even, you know, put a game out on Nintendo. Heck, we don't even have Amazon Prime Video or any sort of Amazon products available. There's no Amazon app. Like, the, Amazon and Nintendo have basically been non-existent for a long time. I mean, the closest thing we could even know is like, because Nintendo sells products on Amazon, but even then over time, like there's been random moments during the Switch era where all of Nintendo's products were taken off of Amazon because there was a dispute between Amazon and Nintendo. Uh, so like I, they're, they're back up now and you can get products again on Amazon. But the point is that like, they haven't always been so chummy. So I don't think the CEO actually knows anything, but I thought it was worth bringing up just because, you know what? It is a major CEO from a major video game development area talking openly about Switch 2, probably not from direct knowledge, more so just opinion. Uh, I also think the idea that Nintendo uh, would rush out a product that's unfinished at this point, a little weird. Uh, no one's expecting this product until we're in year nine of the Nintendo Switch. That doesn't feel like a rushed product. That very much feels like Nintendo is taking their time. Uh, right now, if they're, they're taking any time on anything, it's just to get games ready. I'm pretty confident the UI, the eShop, the account system, I'm, I'm pretty confident like all the basic things, including naturally the hardware itself, uh, has been all ironed out at this point. I don't really think there's any... Uh, like weird development things that still need to happen on that front because they're saying like, oh, they should wait a year. Like, yeah, but now we're hearing reports that like parts of it are going into mass manufacturing. And it's like, come on now. Let's just be realistic here. Uh, clearly, the Nintendo Switch 2 is in a good place. Uh, this Amazon guy, I, I think, is just talking to talk because he wants his name attached to some sort of Switch 2 headline because he's trying to probably get Nintendo to give him a dev kit. Uh, I, why they're not doing it, I don't know. Uh, usually once a system is revealed, Nintendo opens up dev kits to all developers. And what that means is developers can then reach out, request, and pay for a dev kit. So it just so happens that Amazon wasn't privy to having a dev kit early pre-announcement, probably because they have literally zero relationship with Nintendo, like absolutely none. So that makes sense. Companies that have good relationships with Nintendo have had dev kits for over a year. So... That's just how it goes. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathan and Rumble Dance from Nintendo Prime. Whew, what a decently lengthy video for a couple of news stories that are, are fascinating and good conversation starters. But, you know, in the grand scheme, they don't change a whole lot. I think there's just a lot of conversations like this starting to come up as we patiently await for that next reveal. Thank you guys for being here. I'll catch you in the next video.